So we're recording? Okay. Okay, so I wanna thank everyone for coming in our final week of our three series, um, mental health and uh, wellness during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the um, Michelle uh, Greenwell and Ronnie Davis agreed to uh, come aboard and uh, help us out with some strategies to deal with uh, all that's going on in our minds um, all through the pandemic and um, through mindfulness, uh, nutrition and movement. So today we will be talking about movement. So um, I want to welcome you. My name is Susan Fox. I'm the executive director for the Strait Area Chamber of Commerce. And um, a few housekeeping tips that uh, we'd like to do is on the bottom left corner, I ask you to mute yourselves so that um, we don't get that background noise. And in the top right corner, you will want to have it on, uh, you'll see speaker view and, and gallery view. You will want to have it on speaker view, especially for this week. I know the other weeks we had some PowerPoints uh, this week. Um, Michelle will be standing up and doing some movements uh, to get us going. So uh, you'll want to have it on speaker view. So uh, thank you, Ronnie and Michelle, again, for uh, coming and helping us out. And a little introduction for these ladies um, in the areas of movement that they have worked in or are working in now. Ronnie um, started running and strength training in 2007. She completed the PTS course and with Can Pro Fit in 2010 and was a personal trainer until 2018. During that time, she was named the 2015's Canadian Trainer of the Year. She was featured in the National Bodybuilding Magazine, wrote for and was featured by international bodybuilding websites, and was a member of the largest team of female competitive physique athletes in the world, a nationally qualified champion uh, figure athlete and worked with the best of the best in the entire fitness industry. She specialized in weight loss, uh, strength and conditioning, and achieved jaw-dropping transformations for herself and her clients. And she currently run, runs um, a cognitive eating program and uh, is in beautiful Bedeck. So uh, Michelle Greenwell uh, has over three decades of experience in the movement sciences, a dancer since the age of six. She had to stop her competitive career due to injury and has spent the last two decades researching and pursuing the best tips and tools to keep her physical body optimally functioning. Her original love for dance was fueled into fitness training with the, with the aerobic craze in the 1980s and 90s. We all remember that, or most of us, sorry. <laughs> Um, she found that Tai Chi at a point in her life when she could no longer walk and was teaching dance from a stool. Michelle's pursuit of, of something better to keep her body healthy led to um, Touch for Health, a system that balances the muscles in the body, which assists in the energy flow to the organ system based on the five element theory of Chinese medicine. Now pursuing, pursuing a doctorate in integrative health from Akamai University, Michelle's specialty is how to use movement to heal the body. So um, we'll let the ladies take it away. Michelle will be the uh, lady leading this week and uh, Ronnie will have a few comments as well. So I'm excited. Thank you, Susan. Okay, so I thought I would give you a little bit of background on some of the movement that I'm gonna share with you and then we'll just turn the PowerPoint off and go to it. And so then I'll just do from talking and uh, then I'll make the screen much bigger so you can see. So the first part I wanted to explain to you is the difference between exercising and building energy. So one of the things that most people think about and, and we grew up with this is that when we are physically active, it keeps us healthy and that is true, but sometimes we don't have the energy to sustain us for what we think we'd like to do as we go to do those physical activities. So you might decide to go for a run and you always run five kilometers. And today you had a whole bunch of things go on in your life that were very stressful and your body isn't quite up for that. But you think that in order for you to get your proper workout in, you need to do that 5K and you need to push yourself so that you'll get to that space. But that puts us into a stress response 
which is we took our body beyond where we had the energy to support ourselves. And so where I'm going to be coming from is this perspective. Sorry, I'm just going to try to admit another person. I'm just going to come from the perspective of when you are under stress, you need to really be aware of what's going on for your body so that you can respond by building energy for it that you can store and then use it as you need it. But also when you do those physical activities to just be really cognizant of choosing things that keep you out of stress. So in Tai Chi, we talk about a 40 to 70% um, effort. If you have an injury, and that could be mental, that could be just the stress you're living under, being isolated and surrounded by family members all day, trying to get your work done. It could be that you haven't been able to go out and see the people you wanna see, and you really are feeling anxious. And in that case, you don't want to work at a 100% because it means you're gonna to have to push yourself in that overdrive. And what you want to do is pull yourself back to a 40% effort and allow the body to be really relaxed. So that's an exercise I'm going to take you through. If you're okay and everything's working fine and you're feeling like you're not too stressed out, then 70% effort is where you want to work. And that means you're not going right up to the maximum end and you're going to be exhausted when you're done your workout. It means that you're going to be working within a, a level that allows your body to build some energy and store it. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So those concepts are a little bit different than most people um, have worked with before. And when people ask me, how do I get done all the things that I get done in a day? Or how do I stay focused on something to get to the conclusion of what I need to do? And that's my little secret in there, is that 40 to 70% effort. If I cross over the line and push myself too far, in effect, then, you know, I'm the one on the couch going, oh, I can't do anything. And then I'll go grab my bag of chips and I'll watch a movie. <laughs> and that's where I'm at in my stress release. So always trying to stay within that framework of what is 41 to 70%. Okay, from there, we're going to do a little bit with breathing and centering and grounding, which we talked about before. But we're absolutely key in everything that you're doing, especially when you go to do um, any movement kind of patterns. You want to make sure you've got that deep breath happening so the body feels safe and it can get the air in and it can be full. I'm going to show you what whole body movement means because a lot of people, um, they might go for a walk, um, which is great, um, and it gets the circulation going and gets you breathing and everything, but there are some key pieces in your movement that could be even better for you if you just added a few little twists to things. And so I'm gonna to try to show you how to do that. And that's gonna just give you a brain body connection that's going to allow the whole body to respond better and the brain comes alive. So when you go to do some of your tasks that have been on the list for a while, you might notice all of a sudden they're just off the list and they're done. And you think, how come I struggled for weeks to get that finished or how come it took me all day? And then all of a sudden, it's just the brain can focus in because you gave it a movement pattern that would allow it to work better. So that's also a different way to think. And then the last one there is fine rotation. And I'm going to talk about that because if you do go for a walk, you'll be walking straight. And sometimes people do physical activities that never actually change direction. And spine rotation is where you can actually calm emotions. And so I want to talk a little bit about how that could happen and uh, let you experience that. So my goal today is in the, um, oh, in the atmosphere in which we are at this time, uh, trying to overcome our, our anxiety as it's ramping up. To, we just want to get outside and we want to get busy in the garden and we want to start seeing the neighbors, um, allowing us still that opportunity to increase our energy flow so we can decrease our stress. And then how can we do that and how can we continue to keep that in our, in our every activities? Okay, so that's where I'm going to take you. And I'm just going to forward you to, that's where we're going to end up when we're done, is taking our activities outdoors. So I'm going to stop our share here. So then I can see some of you. And if you would like to turn your camera on so I can see you, that's great. I do talk uh, on Facebook Live every day. Uh, to nobody but myself. Sometimes there's a name in front of me. Um, so I'm, I'm used to that, but it's nice if I can see. 
Okay, so hopefully I can see everything. Okay, so if you wish to stand up, what I'd like you to do is just see what your feet feel like on the floor where you are at the moment. And if you're gonna stay seated, because you left your pajama pants on, I say with a, with a grin, um, then just tune into your feet and notice how you're feeling on the floor. So can you feel the pads of each toe? Can you feel the big ball? And can you feel the pinky ball of the foot? So it'd be kind of the pad of the ball of the foot. You've got the, the inside edge and you've got the outside edge. Can you feel them? Can you feel along the side of your foot? And can you feel your heel? Okay, now you're aware that they're there, but for me at the moment, it's like third and fourth toe aren't really there. They're present and they're touching the floor, but I actually can't really feel the floor all that much. I can also feel on my right foot, I'm pushing a little bit harder into the ball of the foot by my big toe. And so I'm a little bit imbalanced there. I want you to know what that awareness is because that's telling you how much awareness you have coming through your body and how much feedback is going from your body back to the brain. And so if there is some pieces missing, you're going to have some energy flow that's not there for you and, and you definitely want that. So if you can be aware of that, that's gonna be a good place to start to notice changes. Okay, so let's go to how you're sitting on the chair. So hopefully you're sitting on your sit bones, sitting straight up. And if you're standing, are you standing so that your hips are relaxed, your knees are unlocked, your shoulders are relaxed, and your neck is straight up? Okay, so just see what that feels like. So for a lot of people, let's turn, a lot of people take their knees and then they'll, they'll grip at the knee hyperextend it and then put the hip forward and then they'll stand in that locked position. So just being able to bring that back and then let it sink. In jazz dancing, we call it standing down. So instead of standing up or standing down, seated, you'd be pulling up through the top of the head and really connecting to the sit bones so that you're connected to the, to, um, the chair that you're sitting on. Okay, so now in that position, what I want you to notice is, where is your breath? So, is it here? Is it quick? Is it here? Is it slow and expanding? Is it um, through the nose, out through the mouth, in the nose, out the nose? And maybe is it um, small and constricted? So just notice where it's at. And remember that your breath will tell you what the status of your body is. And so if you just stop sometimes while you're working away and just go, hey, where is my breath? And then realize I'm not really breathing. Then you have that opportunity to take a few deep breaths in and shift the body out of the stress that it's ramping to and pull it back. Okay, so now that you have some awareness pieces, I also would like you to see <laughs> you're sitting on a chair you can do this too, it's just gonna feel a little different. We're gonna reach down to touch our toes. It doesn't matter if you can touch your toes, all that matters is what does it feel like to get there. So if I lean over and just feel where I'm at, my fingers don't quite make it to the floor at the moment, and I can feel on my one hip uh, where I have a little bit of scar tissue, it's pulling a little bit tight, and the backs of my legs are tight. Okay, so just notice what that feels like. And again, this is just for us to bring awareness back to how you can make a change really quickly. Okay, so let's start with breathing. So if you plant your feet into the floor, feel the floor, stand down so everything's nice and relaxed. And what I want you to do is push into your feet and let your hands rise. And then just let that sink back down. Okay. And again, so you push into your feet. And then let your arms release. Now what you can notice is your elbows and your knees, if they're relaxed, will move together. They're actually linked, which is really cool. 
And if you're seated, when you push into the foot, you're going to notice that your lower back relaxes as soon as you push into your foot before your hands start to move. And that is where you start to make changes in the spine. I'll just let that go. Right. Okay. Perfect. So let's go to uh, sitting down. And I'll just expand that commencement a little bit. Okay. And if you wish to stay standing, that's okay too. I'm going to have you back and forth a little bit. So I'm just going to move myself to the bench. Okay. So my feet, I'll just move this so you can see a little bit better. You can see my feet. All right. So if I go to here and I'm sitting up through the top of my head, I can lift my spine and I can separate each vertebra. Okay. And I can feel into my feet. And I can feel them vibrating now having just done that little commencement. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is a couple more commencements and then I'm going to just bring some awareness to your hands. Okay, so just pushing into the feet and let that come up and then let that come back down. Okay, and just do a couple more. I just have somebody that has just said, please let me in. So we'll let her in. Okay, here we go. So we're coming up. Let that go. And one more. Beautiful. If you have your mic unmuted, if you just, uh, we'll just mute it. Just to make sure. I think it was Tanya that just came on. So Tanya, if you just mute your mic. Perfect. Okay. So that gives us our commencement. And that starts to create our centering and grounding. And get a flow of energy that's just going to come right through the body. So what I want you to do is take your hands now and just put them above your knees. And if there's a desk between you and your knees, if you just slide back from the desk so that you can have your hands over your knees. And I just want you to feel the energy from your palms go down through the knees, through the calf muscle, down to your feet. And hopefully you start to feel a little bit of uh, buzzing start to happen in the legs. So usually as soon as I put my hands there, I can notice. I don't notice it quite the same when I'm standing, um, but I notice it a lot more when I'm seated. And sometimes I learn more when I'm seated. So it's a good place to be. Okay, so we've got that little piece in there, and I hope that's changed how you're feeling the floor. So now what I would like you to do is just bring awareness to those nine points of your feet again and see if that's different than before. And if you were standing when you did that assessment last time, you could just stand where you are and just notice. Just see if now you have maybe a little bit more awareness to the pads, the ends of the pads that you show. And maybe you start to be a little bit more aware of the heel or the other edge of the foot. Just see what you notice. And for me, I have a little bit of vibration going on in my toes and in my hands, which tells me I did wake everything up a little bit. Okay, so that gives us our first bit for centering and grounding and breathing. Okay, so let's do a little bit with spine rotation. I'm going to do this one seated so you can get a feel for it, and then I'll do it standing because there's two ways we could do this. And this is something great you can do when you are outside in the garden. Uh, especially if you are doing a lot of work in the garden and it will just put everything back into motion. Um, or if you go for a walk, you stop to look at something, maybe just take a few moments just to add the spine rotation in. Okay? So if you take your hands and put them apart, so like there's a balloon between your uh, hands, there's a knot at the end of the balloon. What I want you to do is just pull your arms a little bit apart from you turns you can see. So my hands are going to go a little bit in front. So when I move my hands, they'll be in front of my knee. Okay. What I want you to do is just give a little push or awareness into your right foot and it's going to move you towards your left and right there 
You're just going to turn so that your hand lines up with your left knee. Okay, so the, the knot of the balloon would be here, centered with your knee. And then just a tiny little bit of awareness into the left foot. And there can be a rotation that goes to the right. Okay, so let's take it back. So into the right, sends you over. Into the left, sends you back. Into the right, sends you over. You're remembering to breathe. <laughs> Just relaxing and send it back. Beautiful. Okay, now you have emotions that go up and down your spine. And I say that by meaning your body will take your experience and pocket it in tissue. And up and down the spine, the tendons that link to the muscles are all linked to different emotional experiences. And so sometimes you'll get that tightness in between your shoulder blades and you go, oh, I can't understand why it's so tight back there. But all of a sudden that emotion that sits there is raising awareness and it's locked itself up a little bit. So if I was to look at shoulders, that'd be around T4, T5. So you could have worry, you could have anguish, you could have some depression, could be sitting and it just it starts to tighten up the tissue a little bit and then you start feeling that. And just by doing this little piece here, nice and relaxed with deep breaths, you can de-stress that whole system and allow that to let go. Okay. All right, so let's try it standing for those that wish to do that. I'll just bring my camera up a little. And the reason I'm going to do this, I'm just going to give you a different arm. And this is something that's nice to do if you're out on a walk and uh, you, you stop somewhere. You're going to take your palm and put it by your ear. And the other hand is just going to push away. It's like it's pushing through water. And you're just going to push into your right foot just the tiniest little bit. And it's going to turn you towards the left. And then your hands will change places. And if you push into your left foot, it'll turn you back to the right. And you don't have to go very far, so you don't have to turn all the way around, because you could. But you just want just enough that the spine has the chance to be, um, to be turning in a relaxed manner. Nice and gentle. This is fantastic out on the deck first thing in the morning, listening to the birds. And just looking across a field or at your flower pots, just to be able to just get everything moving and adjusting. Fantastic. Okay, and that awareness into the feet, that little bit of push is creating whole body movement, which means that the entire system is functioning together as a unit. It's fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to give you my ultimate exercise. It's uh, in Tai Chi, the Don Yu is the gem of all gems. Standing can be a little bit tougher if you have a tight back, so I like to learn it seated. And then when people have a back that lets go and is nice and relaxed, then you can go to standing. And it depends on the day. Some days I have a really tight back and the standing donnies are not going to be it. So then I just sit down and do it that way. So it's good. Okay, so if you take your feet shoulder width apart, pull your ankles back just a little bit so you'll be able to actually get up out of your chair. And if you're sitting at your desk, just make sure you have enough room to be able to come up and sit back down. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to bang your knees on anything. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there are many layers to this, and I have this all on video with all the descriptions, so I'm just gonna walk you through some layers. So the first layer is the hands. So your hands are gonna be palm up, and you're just gonna fall forward into your feet as you raise your hands out, and then the palms turn over, push into your feet, and you come back. So you're falling forward into the feet, push into the feet, sends you back. That's it. This little baby 
will open up all the energy lines in the body and allow for a free flow of energy and go from head to toe. And again, it's nice and relaxed, no stress. And the breathing just kind of follows it. So if you haven't been breathing deeply or you've been quickly breathing, then this will allow it to slow down, go a little bit deeper. Okay. If all you could do was this little piece, because you have an injury, and let's say you've been sitting a lot and you're bedridden, something like that. If you just did even your hands, not even moving your body forward and back, just this little action, it's like commencement. It actually starts to massage all the internal organs, gets them talking to each other, and it starts to open up the whole field so everything flows better. Okay, so let's take it a little bit further. We're gonna fall forward into the feet, will be our first Danyu. The second down you we're going to balance on our feet. So on the second one, my hands will come out and I'll just lift my bum off of the seat and then I'll sit back down again. Okay. And then the third one, my hands are going to go out and I'm going to push into my feet to go straight up. So my hands go up, push into my feet, my feet lift me and then I can just sit back into the chair and the chair will not have disappeared. So some people will look back to make sure it's still there, but it didn't go anywhere. So you know you're safe. Okay, unless you're on wheels at your desk. Okay, here goes. So you're falling forward into your feet and push back. And then we're just going to go forward and lift our butts and go back. And then your hands come up. So you're standing and then this goes down to sit. Okay, so let's try that again. So we've got forward, sink back. Once on your feet, sink back. Out of the chair, and sink back. Nice, thank you. For the ones I can see, it's great. Okay, so one more set. In and out, balance on your feet. And up and out. Yeah, good. So if I have been sitting at my desk and I have been focused on something for a little bit, if I just push myself back from there and just do five sets of those, I can have the energy flowing from head to toe and I can just be completely refocused. It's a really quick way to get there. And also, if you spend a lot of time sitting, gives you the chance to engage those legs. And if you have knee challenges, this is one really safe way to work the knees without, um, you know, torquing in different directions or working too hard. You do need to keep your knees shoulder width apart, so you don't want to close them together when you go to get up, or you don't want to wow them out. That would be the other piece. Okay, so let's do um, the foot exercise, and this is great to do underneath your desk. But I also do it at the dinner table. If the conversation starts to get a little bit slow, depending on what we're up to, then sometimes I will get going with my feet and that completely re-energizes me. So this is accenting the foot up because you're trying to make the power come this way. If we were listening to Celtic music, we would be tapping down into the floor, but we're actually going to tap up out of the floor. You have a little pump in your heel which is going to pump the blood and the uh, lymphatic fluid back up to the core and help to change everything. So if we change to the other side, you only need to do about 10, 15 of them. So not too many. Okay. And then you put your feet together, put your knee, hands between your knees. We've got turning side to side. If your back is relaxed, you'll be able to feel in your lower back, you'll be able to feel it shifting with you. And not because you moved your hips, just the back muscles are adjusting to what you're doing with your feet. Okay, and then bring that back to center, and then your heels are gonna go. All right. In each 
one, you only need about 10. You don't need too many. Then you're just gonna take your toes and open them up to the side and then bring them back in. So you've got open and close. And this one changes again in the lower back along the L5, which a lot of people will find gets strained when they're out in the garden. If they haven't been doing that action for a while, this will help to relax it. Okay, and then the foot goes straight to the front and your heels. And this one will just be changing how the hips are moving in the socket. And your hips are reciprocal to your shoulders and also to your jaw. So if you've been focused in on a screen, this gives a different way for the body to change how things are working and relax some of the areas. Okay, put your feet together and we go twist, 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 and then slide a pointed toe out. You can leave it there or you can lift it up, but it's pointed. And this is going to open energy lines that pass along the top of the leg, which are liver, gallbladder, stomach, spleen and uh, bladder. Kidney is on the bottom. And we'll get that one in a minute. Twist, twist, twist. And that's going to come up. And again, you don't have to lift your foot. If it's too much, you can leave it there. On the floor, this one's a heel this time, pushing out. And that's how we get a kidney. So we have a water point behind the knee. So if you have your knees bent a lot, or you've been sitting a lot, you'll have that flow of fluid stopped, and this will help to open it back up. Pops up right behind the knee, and there's two points for kidney and bladder there for the energy lines. And one more. Okay, then we're just gonna run our feet, just like Fred Flintstone, whole foot on the floor, and just feel that. Okay. Now, if you compare your legs to when you started today and you first sat down, see if you can notice a change in the energy that's flowing through and how far it goes. So at the moment, mine flows now up to about middle of my back. Lots of people will tell me it kind of comes to about mid leg for them. Some people to about the hips. And eventually, you can have it work straight up to the top of the head. Okay, so this one here, we're just going to turn the hands. This one can be reciprocal to your spine, it can be to the lower leg, it can be your neck. So even though we're turning our hands and we're moving the forearm, we can send our intention into different parts of the body and influence other parts. Okay, excellent. So now this one, you could do seated, but you can do it bed. So it's a good way to start the day if you don't know, um, can't quite get out of bed or you've been in bed because you've been sick. This is a great way to just get things moving. And again, it's gonna flow things up and down the spine. Okay, and if you start to feel the forearms get a little bit, uh, like you can feel some heat building that tells you you have a little bit of block. So we're just going to go like this and rotate right from the shoulder. And that's going to change that flow through the shoulders. And again, this could be shoulders, but it could be hips. Okay. So what I'm going to do is stand up and do it standing. You can stay seated if you wish. And what I'm going to do is just show you with my arms where you're going to be, just so you can see a little bit. All right, so if you bring your hands back up, I'm just going to turn so you can see. Some people will try to do this with their elbows close to their sides, but you want to actually pull it out. So you have a 90 degree angle here, and your shoulders will be engaged when you go to start. And that means then the flow can go all the way through the body, not just to uh, your actual forearms and your hands. Right, 
and then you just breathe. This one is really good if you need to de-stress. And just bring your hands up. Excellent. Okay. So, double check. I think I got everything. The last one I want to give you before I take you for a little walk in the garden is your feet, how you step on your feet. So let's just bring this down. Hopefully you're feeling the flow now coming through your fingers. There's a little bit of a buzz in there. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just show you how to walk on your feet a little bit. So if you have some space around where you're, you're sitting, I'm just gonna take you on a little walk. And this is just bringing awareness to the feet. So it's just stepping a small step forward and then push off the back toe, ball of the foot all the way through each toe and then balancing on your uh, right foot. Then take a little step, push through the other foot, walk through each toe, and then balance on that foot. So this little action here, I have quite a few students who noticed that the fluid in their ankles started to disappear and their articulation for their toes was starting to make their foot cramps disappear. So if that's something that you have a challenge with, this may be helpful. And then we can do the same thing going backwards. Roll down through the foot, stand on that leg. Down through the foot, stand on the leg. Okay, there are many variations of this one. And again, I have it all filmed, so it's on the YouTube channel and you can find it. This one I absolutely love to work with. It's nice and slow and you can use your commencement if you want and just sink. And I'm sharing this with you because when we finally get out onto the grass and get barefoot in the grass, playing with this can be really nice just to really nourish you again. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is come a little bit closer and Bring you to one last thought, and then I'll hand you over to Ronnie for her insights and ideas that have been spurred from what we're doing. All right. And, oops, just hold on here. I forgot to tell you I was gonna share, just one sec. So. All right, and we have, hmm. there we go. All right, so the last thing I just wanted to talk about is being very present with our outdoors. So a lot of people will be starting to go out into the garden, go for walks, down the pathways, hopefully they open the beaches and we can get there. So I just thought I would bring awareness to your senses because that is another way to de-stress. So one is connecting with the earth. If you're walking outside, you can go barefoot in the grass. It's so much nicer than walking in running shoes in plastic. <laughs> so you can actually connect to the grass. If it happens to be in the sand, barefoot in the sand, let, you, let yourself just, let those feet just be caressed by the sand and be really present on how your feet are navigating in either the grass or the sand. The other is time with the water, listening to the water, watching the waves, letting your breath match the waves, and just letting yourself kind of be lulled by that water because it can nourish you as well. You've got movement of the trees, and this is where, I guess we have wind that will come up and blow through for us, but if you can just be aware of the trees, the rustling sound of the leaves, and you can just stand underneath them, you're gonna notice there's a nourishment that comes from the trees as well. We do some of that uh, with Tai Chi movements. Color, be really aware of the colors around you. Notice the sky, notice the leaves, notice how they're changing, the different flowers that start to bloom at the different times of the year, and those colors nourish you all in different ways as well. That is the fresh air and we know we go outside for fresh air, but you have to remember to breathe while you're there. <laughs> Sometimes we forget. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop my share there. And Ronnie, I would love for you to share of the insights that you've got and what comes to mind for you. That was wonderful, Michelle. Thank you so much. Um, really enjoyed that. So I was actually going to comment, one of the suggestions I was going to make was a mindful walk, very similar to what you were just talking about. Um, but my contribution to movement is a little bit different. My expertise, you know, is sort of in the exercise area, the fitnessy kind of area. And everywhere you look now, it seems like there are people offering free fitness classes. And everybody always says, you know, for your mental health, you should be exercising every day. And, and so there's, you know, it feels like there's a lot of pressure and, and a lot of people tend to start, you know, go to bed every night saying, starting tomorrow, I'm going to fitness every day, <laughs> you know, and we set all these goals for ourselves that we want to make sure we're getting in all of this exercise and everything every day, which is wonderful. And obviously, yes, we should be and participating in all these classes and everything. But what I sort of wanted to talk about is more the pressure that we put on ourselves to do all of those things and how it's okay if you're not. Because what often happens is, yes, it's really wonderful to get that exercise in every day great for your mental health, but it's really bad for your mental health if you're unable to force yourself to do it and then beat on yourself every day because you did it. Defeats the purpose. So that's kind of just where I wanted to go with it. Don't do that. Like if, if you're not fitnessing every day, you're doing any of the things that you think that you're supposed to be doing exercise wise, that's fine. That's cool. That's you do you like whatever works for you. If you are getting the exercise in, wonderful if you're not don't be on yourself for it just let that be okay you may not have energy for it you can try doing a lot of the um, things michelle just went through to see if you can build up some energy um, and see if that helps some but if you just don't have the energy for it that's cool but what you can do like i said you know a lot of what michelle just just went took you through you can try doing some of those and see if it helps you to build some of that energy so that you want to do a little bit of exercise but what you can do is really focus on staying connected with how your body's feeling right so if you're telling yourself i want to exercise or i should be exercising but you're not well like why am i not and what am i feeling in my body so instead of feeling like i'm supposed to be exercising or i should be exercising or i should be just stay connected like in here and what does it what do i feel what do i need you know, like Michelle talked about the tight neck and stuff. If your body feels tight, if you're emotionally exhausted, you don't have energy to do exercise and that's okay. But you can still do other things. Again, you can do a lot of the things Michelle just went through. Wonderful exercises to build a little bit, little bit of energy. You can try to, like, if you don't have the energy for a walk, step outside on your step and just walk to the end of your driveway and breathe that will build some energy and a lot of times with exercise and movement and these types of things the hardest part to get ourselves to do is just to start so instead of thinking well I, you know what's the point of walking if i'm not going to do an hour and i don't have time to do an hour or i don't have energy to do an hour think five minutes of mindful walking and you know listening to the water like michelle was just saying and and doing all of those things that's better than no minutes and once you start, the chances that you will keep doing it and go for even longer are high because again, starting is the hardest part. So if you're struggling to find ways to stay more active and you know you keep promising to be all fitnessy and you never do it, just keep paying attention to how it feels to be in your body and asking yourself, what would make my body feel better right now? Sometimes your body's gonna say, sleep feels better right now. But other times, if you're paying attention and you're listening to it, your body's going to tell you, oh, gosh, you know, my neck is really sore or, oh, my energy is really low and I just need to be outside moving a little bit. Right. So just always, again, coming back to that connection with your body and what does my body need right now? Forget what I think I'm supposed to do or I should do or, you know, any of that stuff. What does my body actually need right now? And when you do it from that perspective and you take away the pressure of doing all of the things you think you're supposed to be doing and you just come at it from a place of i just want to spend five minutes doing something that's make going to make my body feel better right now i promise you that's going to help your mental health 
more than an hour of exercise that you're not gonna do because you're trying to force yourself to do something that sucks. So make it super easy, make it something that feels better, that makes your body feel better almost immediately and make it fast. If you're struggling to find ways to talk yourself into doing stuff, like the things that Michelle just went through, so simple, so easy. Most of them, you saw me do all of them just sitting. You don't even have to get up to do them and you're going to feel better. And so think of it that way. How does my body feel? How do I want to, how do I want it to feel? And what can I do right now to bridge that gap? Because there's immediate gratification if whatever you choose to do right now makes your body feel better in two minutes right? Versus trying to force yourself to suffer through an hour of exercise and then just not doing anything and then beating on yourself because you didn't do anything. Make sense? So that's just sort of where I wanted to come from, um, come at it from. And if we have, I think the, um, we were going to leave a few minutes at the end to, for questions and things. I did have um, a very short meditation that I wanted to just finish the series off with before we end the whole thing for good though, if that's okay, maybe like five minute meditation, if that's okay. Sounds good. And uh, what I'll do is I'll um, put the, the last PowerPoint up with some of our resources just at the end when you finish the, power, when you finish the meditation. Yeah, I'm going to, I didn't get the, the PDF done yet, but I'm going to have another handout for this week too that's going to give just a couple quick exercises that you can do, um, some really super short yoga videos to, that you can do for certain areas of our bodies that tend to be the most tight. Again, like Michelle said, the neck and the shoulders and the hips and lower back also tend to be among the most tight. So I am going to have a PDF available for some of those things too, just to help you put those things into practice a little bit. Again, just a two to five minutes a day just to do something will make your body feel better than, than not doing anything. And if you do nothing, that's cool too. Don't beat on yourself for it. <laughs> okay, did you wanna start the meditation? Do we wanna do the meditation first or do we wanna open for some questions first? Up to you guys, anybody have any questions? Anyone have questions over the three weeks? Because we did mindfulness and we did nutrition and then we did movement. So questions or comments, any takeaways from our three week session that these lovely ladies provided us? Oh, another quiet bunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we do the meditation and then We'll just hang out and whomever would like to stay and ask questions, they are welcome to do so. And, uh, and I'll put the PowerPoint up at the end of that. And uh, for anybody who has to disappear because they've got to go back to work or attend to somebody, thank you so much for being a part of this and sharing with us. And we hope we've given you some resources that you can use. Yeah. And the, the chamber will have it on our social media channels and as well on our website. And also on the website, there's um, COVID-19 um, information there around mental health. And there's different, we always update it if there's webinars and things going on. So, uh, and, you know, follow us on social media, follow Ronnie and Michelle as well. And uh, we always have something going on. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for participating. And Thank you dearly, Michelle and Ronnie, for coming to us and offering to do these sessions because we oh, really yeah. greatly appreciate it. It was the uh, most talked about panel from our FemPower Women Leadership in the deck um, from February. So we were more than happy to have you back and uh, teach us some more. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. All right, so this is easy. We're just gonna sit comfortably. Find yourself a nice comfortable position. You're going to close your eyes down and you're just going to start to breathe and relax. So you're just going to take a minute to center yourself. Sitting upright in a confident position, feeling supported and at ease in this position. Close your eyes down, observe your breath. Relax. and expand your awareness to the sensations of your body. 
Notice the surface beneath you and how it supports you. Root your body into its strength. Visualize or imagine in your mind's eye a grand mountain. It can be one that you've seen or one that you make up. It can stand alone or be part of a mountain range. This mountain's been here for a long time. It's supported by a vast foundation of bedrock and it is unmoving and powerful. It may have jagged ridges or smooth slopes. It can be tree covered or bare, blanketed with snow or dripping with waterfalls. However it is, let it be as it is, perfect. Be this mountain and experience its stillness. With your head at the peak and your spine as the axis, feel yourself become centered and grounded. Feel the core of the mountain that remains unchanged even as the seasons begin to change around it. Be the mountain as the seasons turn to fall and you're surrounded by golden light and bright colors. As the cycles of life shift toward decline, Watch as the dormancy and darkness of winter take hold and sustain through the intensity of the violent weather, ice and snow. Notice how the mountain remains still, quiet and steady through the storms. Feel the warmth of the sun as it begins to warm once again. The stirrings of new life emerging from the thawing ground. The rush of melt overflowing and cascading from the mountain peaks. Hear the songs of birds and watch the wildflowers sprout in a dance of new beginnings. Bathe in the heat as summer ignites a furry of growth and life. As thunderstorms roll through your valleys. Watch as the sky becomes a glow with deep orange and yellow as the sun sets behind you. slowly turning to darkness that reveals the galaxies and endless space beyond, only to be obscured again with the rosy hues of dawn. Be the mountain that remains still and grounded through the changes of weather, time, and seasons that take place at its surface, undisturbed at your core. Notice how day and night come and go. The seasons are in a constant state of change and yet you resist nothing, knowing that deep down you remain unchanged, secure, safe, and whole. You like the mountain.
your life will present an ever-changing experience at the surface. And you will experience varying degrees of darkness, light, activity, and stillness. But always remember that at your core, the truth of who you are remains strong and patient. Allowing everything that passes to be as it is, as you enjoy the variety and colors of life. With composure and compassionate clarity. From here, we're going to take one super big deep breath in, big deep breath, big belly breath. <laughs> And let it go. When you're feeling ready, take your time. There's no rush. When you're feeling ready, open your eyes and come back to the room. How's that feel? Everybody feeling grounded and confident and still and full of energy from Michelle's awesome exercises, movements. That feels wonderful, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Just so much. I, one thing I didn't comment on is um, community. Because mm. you know, just lifting your arms, sitting in your chair to do a commencement and deep breathe. You don't feel like even doing that, but mm. it it takes connecting with one person. And it might be you get up from your chair and you see someone in the house, or you connect on Facebook, or you just pick up the phone and do it the old-fashioned way, and just that conversation ignites you and allows you to move to the next place. And I didn't talk about that, but, but community is so important, so. Yeah, absolutely. Which thank goodness for our Chamber of Commerce, as they are a community that keeps us centered and focused and together, so. And supported, yes, absolutely. So thank grateful. You, thank you, ladies. Yeah, we appreciate you guys as well, yeah. Any comments on, on the, uh, today's or the week's events that we had. No, quite a bunch. <laughs> well, thank you again. I greatly appreciate it. And um, it uh, definitely, I was looking at the movements that you did today. I know a few people that I'll definitely share them with that, you know, maybe can't get around as well. And, and I know some of friends that have commented on, you know, our new at home offices are not uh, ergonomically set up the way we have to uh, be able to bring some energy back to your uh, body and mind. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, not to underestimate color. I know you, you see in my background, there's color all through my house, but uh, <laughs> just what color you put on makes a big difference. So if you need a little boost, you know, go to the cupboard, see what you've got in your t-shirts or, or your sweatpants, but not, not choosing a, a darker, you know, like a black or a gray all the time and going, hmm, what color really picks me up today? And that can make such a difference. You just have no idea. <laughs> Speaking to a black and a gray lady. <laughs> I'm looking at the ones on the screen and my, you know, my background is always so full of color. So, but it depends what room I go into too, what I need, because I have two rooms that are yellow. So the sun shines for me every day where my husband, it's always gray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'll stop the recording and We'll hang out if there's anybody that has anything else that they would uh...